So, good evening, everybody. It is two minutes past nine. Um, thank you so much for joining me. It's Monday night. Every Monday night we do this. It's the Ads on This TV live broadcast. Basically, for the next hour, we'll be talking all about, well, do you know what? Whatever you want, really. Live on Facebook now. We're live on Twitter. Live on Periscope as well. Um, huge shout out to those who are here. Andrea Watson's in the house. How, how are you? Um, Cheryl's here as well. No, not seen you, you here before, Cheryl. Maybe you're a newbie. Thanks for uh, joining us. Sarah Jane's here, Leah's here, Helen's here, Steve's here, Linda's here. Linda, good evening. Tony from Chicago, Helen, Dawn, Ollie, Ricky. Uh, everyone's jumping in. Um, if you are here for the first time, let me uh, let me know. Don't just lurk. You get a lot of lurkers, don't you? People who just lurk on these broadcasts for quite a bit and then they never really like chime up. Um, you don't have to if you don't want to, but it's nice to uh, you know to get involved. Jamie begs in the house. Jamie, apologies, I've not emailed you back yet, mate. We're definitely going to make it happen. What you spoke about in the email, one hundred percent, and we'll uh, and we'll sort it out. One hundred percent, definitely. I've just been running around like a mentalist today to, to the point where I've broken a rule. I'm drinking coffee now at like five past nine at night. Been a bit of a crazy one. Um, so we're going to be talking um, about a few things tonight. Uh, we had an amazing Ats on This TV Manchester and London meetup on Saturday. For those new to the community, um, obviously a huge community of actors. Everybody is super supportive. It's all about like you know teamwork, one up, all up. Everyone helps everyone in this community. Super positive. Um, we had a really really good meetup in Manchester. I host the Manchester one. Uh, we've got Wendy and Mel host the London one down south. Um, Wendy brings cakes, but um, Sophia brought cakes this time to the Manchester one so there's a bit of rivalry going on there um, but we met in home theatre was amazing um, we had a, a really really good time and a few things came up in that meeting there's normally like 30-40 actors um, come to those meetings and they're completely free by the way like so much stuff in this community is completely free so um, get yourself down there first Saturday of every month um, and one of the things that did come up this uh, this time was money and this is something that I've spoken about on loads of these broadcasts before. We've done book clubs on on money. Um, ultimately, um, people's mindsets around it. I used to have a really broken mindset uh, when it came to money. I wasn't brought up in a wealthy family at all. We were very working class. Uh, was brought up with phrases like "money doesn't grow on trees." Uh, you know those kind of things. I'm sure you can relate to those. Um, which you might not think you know means a lot, but when you grow up and you know you've been drilled into your whole life that money is hard to come by, it's almost like you accept that fact that it is that you'll never have any. That you know it doesn't run in your family. That you're not meant to have any. You don't deserve any. Um, and people tend to dream in terms of their capabilities to acquire money um, very much based on how much of it their family had around them when they were growing up and it can really massively limit you. Um, and one thing actors always complain about is having no money. So started talking to Steve Connolly. I don't know if he's here tonight, one of the Acts on This members. Um, and I was saying what I've done with a few people, a few actors over the years when they've been like, look, I don't have any money for this, I can't afford that, spotlight's really expensive, I can't pay my equity subs, can't afford to go to acting class, blah, blah, blah. I'll sit down with them and we'll audit brutally as well, like really brutally, I'll audit exactly where they're spending money. And I, and I, and I do this because I did it to myself when I was working for minimum wage in a toy shop in the Trafford Centre 11 years ago, hating my life, you know, spending 30 to 40 hours a week in a, in a minimum wage job um, and try to have you know any kind of success in my acting career. Um, and I too was convincing myself, acting classes, oh, can I afford them? Can I do this? Can I do that? And I sat down and I, I literally referenced where every penny from my, God, I think I was earning like, honestly, I think I was probably earning 700 quid a month to pay for my entire life um, back then. And the amount of money I was wasting on dumb shit was ridiculous. Um, I re I redid my finances just about a year ago when I bought the apartment I'm sat in now because suddenly I felt skint again. And I again, I did this audit. I went down everything that I was spending. And you know what I'm like with coffee? The amount of money I was spending on coffee from Costa Coffee that was £3.70 a cup, so having like two cups of coffee a day, going, wow, Ross, you're spending over seven quid a day. That's over 50 quid a week, 200 quid a week, uh, a month. On, uh, on coffee, it's insane. You don't miss it when it's like £3.70 here and there, but when you actually look at it over a month, it's ridiculous. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about this um, tonight. It um, wasn't just talking to Steve um, that put me on to this. Does it resonate with anyone? To begin with, by the way, I'm going to show you a picture in a second that I saw posted on Facebook that, um, again, hopefully will resonate with people. Um, let me know if you... Uh, 
if you've ever done this in your life or if right now you're complaining about having no money, but really in the back of your head, you know you're also maybe running away from your life a little bit because you might not be having the success you wanted. This is what I was doing. I wasn't having the success that I wanted in my acting career. So I was using that money when I was in that minimum wage job to go out of the weekend, to buy nice things, buy, buy, you know, buy a shirt, go out, get drunk on a weekend. And I'd convince myself I didn't have any money to spend on you know, the thing that I really wanted to do in my life um, because going out and getting drunk and having that instant gratification on a Saturday night was more important. It was just bonkers, but that was like you know, where my head was at 11 years ago. Um, uh, Andre's in the house. Um, how we doing? Uh, Tony's here as well. Tony says, I'm actually reading You Are a Badass at Making Money. Jen Sincero, great book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've, we've done that book on, on the book club, Tony. It's a really, really good book. Um, it's, uh, Samantha's here as well. It says, really making me aware of how many limiting beliefs I have around it. Um, changing that now. People do think money is like, a, you know, almost like a dirty word. And it's like, honest, honest to God, right? Like, to make an impact on this world, right? I'm all about having a positive impact on the acting community and as many people as I can come across in my life, right? I do an awful lot of that stuff for free. I mean, that's on this.tv is like 10 quid a month, £2.50 a week. It's dirt cheap. Although I still get actors telling me they don't have £2.50 a week to spend in their acting career, yet they will go to Costa or Starbucks and buy a coffee. I know that for a fact. I, I, I'm friends with them on Facebook. I follow them on social media. I see them doing this shit. They'll tell me they've got no money to spend on anything. Oh, I can't afford the membership to the website where I'm going to get access to all of this incredible information. Um, but I can afford to uh, post a picture on a Sunday morning of my poached eggs and smashed avocado in a hippie little coffee shop with an oat milk latte that cost me at least 12 quid. I'm like, you're fucking kidding yourself. You just don't want to invest in the things that are going to require a bit of work for you to implement in order to have the success you want. You want instant gratification. Alex Hall in the house. How you, uh, how you doing? Um, so yeah, um, people's mindsets around money can be broken. I'm going to, I'm going to show you this picture and I'm going to play you a quick video um, that hopefully, again, will hammer this uh, point home and we'll just talk about it. Maybe someone would want to um, audit. Oh, by the way, Steve, who we did this audit with, five and a half grand a year he was wasting. Five and a half thousand pounds a year. So the guy's not super rich. But when he looked at everything, you know, the times he was going to the pub, the times he was going to Greg's, <laughs> the food he was buying when he was out, as opposed to making stuff at home, um, you know, five and a half thousand pounds. And there was a guy previously like, can I, you know, can I afford to go to this acting workshop? Can I afford to do this? Can I afford to, you know, get new headshots? Can I afford to have a showreel scene shot? It's 300 quid for a showreel scene. Oh, can't afford that. But you know what? I'll go to the pub like just once a week for six months and I'll spend that money anyway. You don't notice it when you're doing it gradually. Um, this video, not video, this picture. Uh, let me see if you've. Let me tell me if you've seen this. Not that picture. That's not a picture. That's a picture of an upcoming podcast I'm doing. <laughs> That's the wrong picture. This picture. Has anyone seen this picture on um, on Facebook this week? Uh, let me know. I saw this on Lee Petcher's Facebook. He shared it. And this was really the instigator for me talking about money with Steve and everyone at on this, uh, the meetup on Saturday, um, and then doing this broadcast uh, tonight as well. Um, so it says, truth bomb. For those listening on the audio experience, I'm just going to read it out to you. It's a comparison of what people you know, are saying is too expensive and what they're actually then doing in reality. It starts off, it says, healthy food shop, 100 pounds too expensive so everyone's like oh i can't afford to eat healthy it's too expensive and then underneath it says dinner date 100 pounds reasonable and that's what i see happening you know i'm not saying you know you get couples don't you like i've got to have a date night once a week and i completely am you know god relationships and nurturing healthy relationships is so important in your life but if you are complaining about getting nowhere in your acting career right now or nowhere if you know if maybe you stumbled across this broadcast you're not even an actor but if you're if you're you know struggling and, and complaining that you don't have the money to invest in the thing you want to do or you're getting nowhere, you're sick of treading water or you feel like you're on this treadmill and you're actually getting nowhere in your career um, and you're saying you've got no money to you know, to do that and to invest in yourself and there's no amount of money that's too much when it com comes to investing in yourself. Uh, if you're saying you can't do that but then you and your other half are going out to Pizza Express and spending 75 quid on pizzas and wine and desserts and you know taxis to and from the venue or whatever on a Wednesday night for your date night, really need to have a little word with yourself it says there month supplements this is talking about like health maybe you work out maybe that'll be protein bars protein shakes you know just supplements for your health vitamins um 100 quid people say oh i can't afford that and it says night out drinking 100 quid weekly occurrence i lived that i'm not not too proud to put my hand up and go that was me i was that guy 10 years ago 11 years ago 
probably more than that now, actually. Maybe it's getting on for 12 years ago, who was exactly that. Oh, can't afford that. You know, I'm not going to not going to buy that, 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 you know, that's going to invest in my health every single week, every Friday, every Saturday night. I can tell you without fail. I was going out and I was spending at least a hundred pounds a night and I was only earning 700 quid a month, 200 quid. You know, I had a lot of credit cards as well. (laughs) I had a lot of credit cards, 200 quid. I was was basically spending more on alcohol than I was earning in a month. Um, I was convincing myself, you know, I couldn't spend the money on the things that really would have made a difference in my life because that would have been a bit more hard work and wouldn't have brought me instant gratification. Uh, But I'll go out and get drunk and I'll go to the casino and some nights it would be obscene. I'd spend another 100 quid losing at the casino. Or maybe, you know what, one week I'd win, two, 300 quid. I promise you the week after I'd go back and I'd give it all back. Absolute losing mentality. Um, it says there, personal growth seminar, 280 quid. Whoa, crazy chat. Gucci belt, 280 quid. Need to have it. Again, I see this shit. How many, who's been on Instagram today at some point and um, has seen a... This happens quite a lot around summer when people have gone on holiday. Um Again, and this is, this, it, I'm not being, I am being a bit brutal, but this is because I follow so many actors and I see them making bullshit excuses when they come to me saying, and they're so miserable and unhappy that they're getting nowhere. And then I see them booking a two week trip to Ibiza for a grand, going to Ibiza with the girls or with the lads. And I'm like, wow, that's why you're losing right now. Think of what you could do. You look at yourself as a, as a business. You know, I run a few businesses. What I could do, invest in a grand into my business or into my acting career as it is a business is incredible. Or you can go and spend that on a holiday to Ibiza. Um, and then what you can do for the rest of the six weeks when you get back is just every every Monday morning, because you're in a job that you freaking hate, you can put a picture of you in Ibiza from last week and the week before with a hashtag, take me back. It's bullshit. It's just such a losing life, but you will see it every single day on Instagram. Hashtag, take me back. You know what, when you're doing something you love because you've invested in yourself and you're getting successful and you're getting somewhere, you don't need to be taken back anywhere because you're more than happy with where you're at. Um, Start a business, £1,000, can't justify that. iPhone X, £1,000, this is a necessity. See that a lot, don't you? Best Lacey in the house. Nikki Helens is here as well. Good to uh, to see you. Um, That's something, again, that I see a lot. I saw somebody yesterday who was thoroughly miserable a couple of weeks ago saying how happy she was to get her iPhone XS um, and how she was going to lease a uh, some sort of Land Rover or something <laughs> on finance. I'm like, look, this is why. You just, you're just looking for shiny bullshit objects that you don't even need for yourself. You're buying them to impress someone else with. Um, I'm going to show you a video all about that in a minute. Um, 60 minutes at the gym. Let's go on to time. Forget money. Let's just go on to time. 60 minutes at the gym. Wish I had time. 60 minutes watching Netflix. Time flies. Watch another one. You know, this is what people do. They won't, they'll say, oh no, but you know, I really just wish, you know, I wish I felt better about myself. I was in better shape. Well, why don't you go to the gym? Oh no, you know, but they did watch every episode of the last season of Game of Thrones. That's what happens. Um, And then uh, it says at the bottom there, everything in life is about priorities and what you prioritize will dictate what your life looks like. Where will you be in five years? Um, So it might sound brutal that, but who agrees with it? Who's seen or, you know, like I say, I'm I'm not like saying, oh, I'm, I'm amazing. I don't do this. That was my life a decade ago. That really, really was, you know, oh, you know, I can't afford to, uh, you know, I'd have loved to have maybe gone out and done a pilot season in LA or gone and trained at, you know, somewhere just cool, just go to a New York acting school for a couple of weeks or something like that, do an intensive over summer, set you back a grand. And I'd be like, no, I can't afford that. But you know what? I'd go out on a Friday and I'd spend 50 quid on a t-shirt to impress nobody in a club on a Friday night. You know, I'm not saying, oh, do do what I do. I'm fucking perfect. I used to do all this shit, and and it and and it just kept me stuck to the spot within my acting career for I don't know four to six years longer than it should have done. Um, let's see what comments are coming through. Uh, Andrea says, "Just been to see a financial advisor for free. Amazing, and she did that for me. It's amazing how you can free up the cash." Try listening to Abraham Hicks on YouTube and Jack Canfield. Yeah, Jack Canfield's wicked. Don't know about Abraham, but um, but Jack's really awesome, awesome guy. I've got a few Jack's books. Um, it's it's interesting, isn't it, Andrea? Because and I'm certainly not. You know, please don't think I'm attacking anyone tonight. And coming on here like again, like I, this used to be me. Um, I'm certainly and I'm certainly not perfect. You know, I still will if I'm out and about. You know, grab a. I mean, this is I started getting Nespresso coffees and an espresso machine in my flat because it's about thirty five p a cup. 
as opposed to Costa, which is literally underneath my apartment, which is nearly four quid. Um, but I will be honest with you, you know, if I'm coming in and I'm in a bit of a rush or just, you know, sometimes like, I just really want a Costa. I will still go and get one, but I am like still aware of going, that's four quid that I just could have put into something else. Um, you know, you've, you've got to be, you still got to be savvy. Um, Linda says 12 quid for coffee. Yeah, honestly, avocado on toast and coffee, easily 12 quid when I see it out and about. And again, I'll see actors complaining they've got no money or they cancel the membership to act on this or they can't, you know, they can't pay the spotlight or whatever it is because um, they don't have the money. And I'll see them post that on a, you know, on a Sunday morning or whatever, you know, fit fam in a trendy, you know, freaking coffee shop somewhere in Shoreditch. And I'm like, wow, you just have not got your priorities straight. You will not be working for a long time. Uh, meal prep has been a game changer, says Tony. I've wasted way too much cash before. Um, I started making my own food. All actors should be getting a class in meal prep in drama school. Yeah, I agree, man. Definitely make a big. I used to do that for um, where you know for like just health, eating healthy. Ultimately, when I was training, when I first started training in the gym, um, just make a big batch of something on a Sunday. You know, you could do spaghetti bolognese or you know any kind of like curry, rice. You know, healthy uh, healthy curry though, not just one full of oils and stuff. Um, and then you just whack it into uh, Tupperware boxes and freeze it. And then you can just you can just take it out, you know, and heat it up, as opposed to buying something, you know, when you're out that would be like ten quid. You know, a Subway sandwich in the UK, Tony. You don't know what they are in America. Um, again, this is only because <laughs> I know because I bought one and I shouldn't. Have, I didn't know how much it was. A foot long Subway sandwich and it drinks over a tenner um, with a cookie or something like that. It's it's just ridiculous. Ten quid for a sandwich. Leah says I stopped myself from buying a takeaway last night and have muesli with fruit instead. Leah. You know, look at that health benefit, double win health benefits and benefits to your uh, to your bank balance as well. Brian says, "I'm just starting out on my acting career, and I'm spending seventy quid a month on my own money to do extra work. I want to do more with my career, get leads or even a small paid part, but it's really hard to get people to accept you because I'm new. I have experience, just not getting the chance. It's a marathon, Brian, mate. Honestly, man, I um." Fair play to you for spending your own money to just get there and do it. I guess, so what do you mean? You mean you're spending more to do extra work than you're making from the extra work. Um, and fair play to you if you are, mate, if you just want to get experience on set and stuff. That's something that's really, really good. There are, as you know, if you... Uh, if you're brand new and you want to just do a bit of extra work for a few months to kind of get, you know, more experience on set and more awareness of what happens on a TV set. And you can meet some incredible people when you're doing extra work. You know, I used to do extra work. I mean, we're talking 21 years ago, but I met over like a two year period when I did it, when I was, you know, really young before drama school, some fantastic connections in the industry who were like, you know, first assistant directors, second assistant directors, runners, camera guys, all kinds of people. Cause I was always, you know, quite chatty on set and I was in, I was curious um, and asked a lot of questions. And um, so it is really, really valuable. But if you uh, join the next was agency, um, don't know where you are in the country, post in the Facebook group um, here. I don't know where you are right now, if you're on the Facebook page for on this or you're in the group. Um, post in the group if you want recommendations. I'm sure there'll be people who will recommend play, you know, places for you. But um, you can earn 120, 150 quid a day on decent shows um, to do it. So hopefully it shouldn't be costing you, you know, any more um, to get there and do it. Um, but fair play to you, mate, if you're out of pocket just starting off. You know, that's dedication for you. Um, don't do it for too long so you're completely out of money. Um, but, yeah, and it's it's a marathon, mate. You can't come into this industry and just, unfortunately, get there straight away. I'm, um, God, I'm like 20 years in almost. Well, 15 years out of drama school, still only getting two and three eps at, at a time in terms of when I'm doing TV work. I get two episodes, three episodes um, of a drama or something like that. I mean, you will get people who are just plucked out, you know, and will get a really lucky break. Definitely happens. Um, you know, opportunity meets preparedness at some point. Um, and they, you know, will get, you know, a bit of a, a leapfrog effect on a lot of other people. But um, for everyone else, I mean, put, give Brian some idea of how long you've been cracking at this, guys, in the chat, because it is definitely a, uh, a marathon. Um, and you've got to enjoy the process, mate. It's difficult because you're going to get frustrated because you'll be feeling like you're not making that much progress. Um, but you are. Just turn around and have a look at how far you've come already. Um, and if you really want to um, you know, learn about how the industry works quickly, um, I know we're talking about money tonight and I'm not selling anybody anything, but basically I've spent the last eight years of my life um, creating actonlist.tv, ultimately like what I believe is the best 
knowledge platform for actors on the planet. I interview the biggest casting directors, agents, actors, writers, producers in the industry, sit them down and get them to explain to us and to you as you are listening exactly step by step what you need to do as an actor to have success. Um, the platform is blowing up. We've, you know, already this week. Um, it, I want to say thank you for those who are joining. You know, we've had 50, before I went online today, over over the weekend and up to today, we had 59 people um, join over the weekend. Um, if it carries on at, at that rate, um, God, the amount of features I'm going to be able to bring you guys are going to be incredible. Um, but yeah, Brian, settle in, man, for like the long run and enjoy it and, you know, join the community, be part of what we do here. Everyone will support you. It's super, super supportive. Um, and you can make strides quite quickly. There was a guy, Cy Jennings, I don't know if he's here tonight on the broadcast, came to the meet-up, the Saturday meet-up that we just did for Acts on This TV in Manchester, gave him a bit of advice on some steps to take to get an audition because he wanted uh, his first TV credit, and now he's got a general audition for one of the serial dramas um, next Monday with a really big casting director because he took action on the information that he was getting um, at that you know, at that event that we were at. So um, it's all about, yeah, implementation, you know, you can go on actsonlist.tv, um, bring the website up now. You can, uh, you know, have a look and uh, all, oops, wait a second, and gone, and gone, and gone. There you go. Um, you know, you can go on here and you can have a look at all these features and so you can take all, you know, all this information in. Still going to mean nothing to you if you don't implement it. It's called act on this for a reason because, you know, you listen to these features with these, you know, the biggest people in the industry, you know, I can show you how to do it and they can show you how to do it, but no one can make you do it, mate. You've got to really put the, uh, the time and the, uh, and the effort in yourself. But that's on this TV. Go, uh, go check it out. Um, best is here. Danny Shepard's here. All right, Danny, hope you're well, my man. Uh, bloody hell, I'm driving a car, says Alex, with 139,000 miles on it. Haven't had a holiday since 2006. Perfectly happy to be working or looking for work. Alex, you are a legend. <laughs> Do you know, I've not had a holiday since 2009. I genuinely don't feel like I need a freaking holiday. And I'm not just saying that. I'm really just not saying that. A lot of my friends, you know, genuinely are like, they can't, because they're doing jobs they don't like, ultimately. They cannot wait to get away this summer. They cannot stop talking about, you know, Ibiza or stag do's or hen do's or, you know, where they're going. Um, and they hate coming back. I've never hated that. I, you know, I, I love coming back home. <laughs> and then we're going like, oh, I'm so depressed. I've got holiday blues. Because for the last sort of 12 years of my life, um, pretty much I've been doing what I love. Um, so, yeah, fair play, Alex. 139,000 miles on the car. Good stuff. Um, Gary Thomas in the house. Hope you're well. Ricky says, I think it's so important to find the balance between investment in your business and career and enjoyment, socializing. I sometimes struggle finding the balance. Yeah, I get you on that, Ricky. Sometimes I will sit here because I'm a bit of a workaholic, but I love what I do. I love this. This isn't work right now. You know, it's 25 past nine. I know we've all got better, you know, but we haven't got better stuff to do, but we've all got things we could be doing. Um, and that's why I massively appreciate all you lot for tuning in because I know, you know, I'm competing with tv i'm competing with netflix and stuff and you lot are choosing to spend this time with me it's amazing um i love this time but yeah sometimes i will uh i'll work quite late and i'll think oh okay you know what maybe i just should have spent that hour doing such and such a thing chris stone the director keeps um dragging me out on a on like a friday night about half eight he goes right i'm coming around half eight nine o'clock we're gonna go bowling and he just like drags me out of the flat <laughs> um because if he didn't i probably would stay and do a little bit more work but it's you know it's just because i genuinely uh you know find it cool but i get it ricky i'm with you on that mate definitely i think there's there's maybe some more balance on the social side of things that i could find in my own life definitely feel that sometimes um otherwise i find myself on a saturday night sitting in on my own drinking an, an espresso martini out of the can <laughs> <laughs> get one from Sainsbury's for two quid and just sit here going I've got no friends what's going on uh, Sarah Jane says I can 100% agree with spending money on food I need all all Greg's stores in the UK to ban me we'll arrange that Sarah definitely Lowry's here as well Danny says I find the best way to stop spending too much is to work on your hourly rate then instead of looking at price you can say I will have to work 45 minutes for coffee that's it Danny that is exactly what I used to do at game and it used to cripple me. So this, like I say, 11 years ago, I was only £5.75 an hour. We're going like way back. Um, and yeah, and I would go, oh my, I can't believe I used to do this. But yeah, I would go out on a Friday night and I'd go to some trendy bars, mate. And drinks would be like 10 quid. And I go, wow. So this, this in my hand here, this is two hours of my work. Like, and it would floor me. So it'd make me drink more. Uh, <laughs> so so don't do it just don't do it but that's a really good way of looking at it. it hurts more when you look at it like that 
Uh, then it says Subway at Covent Garden uh, made me so ill for three months, never again. I once got compiler back to from a Subway, uh, Linda, because they're all franchised, aren't they? Um, so, uh, yeah, I agree with you on that. Um, what else have we got here? Brian's in Scotland and with an agency called GMB Casting. They're uh, not doing anything for me, if I'm perfectly honest with you. I'm finding unpaid extra work on Facebook, acting sites. Mate, right, okay. Again, hear this a lot, hear this a lot, a lot. A lot, a lot, a lot. Um, a lot of actors will stay. I did it earlier in my career. Will stay in a situation, ex- doing this. It's insanity in it, you know. Doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. Um, if you have thought, this is how I judge it, and this is how I judge everything in my life when I think a change is due. Right? I did it when I bought this apartment. I was looking for furniture. If I think about something and I don't take action on it, and then I think about it for a second time and still don't take action on it, if I then come back to it for a third time, I know I have to do it. So for instance, you know, when I'm buying something, I go, oh, right, okay, yeah, I really like that table. Ooh, but you know, it's a bit expensive, I'm not going to get it. I look around elsewhere. Oh, I can't really find one as good as that. Oh, I should get it. Oh, no, it's a bit expensive. I won't get it. Go and have a look around somewhere else. And then like a week later, I'll be like, you know what, fuck it. Like that is, I can't stop thinking about that. That is the thing I have to do. And I've done it in my own career when it comes to agents. If I thought about leaving, but I've bottled it, because if I'm honest with you, I'm shit scared of the breakup. <laughs> Don't like the breakup. I've gone, no, 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 I'll leave it, I'll leave it. Then maybe like I'll be saved the second time because a job will come in. And I go, oh, okay, maybe the, you know, maybe it's all right. Okay, things are going to pick up. If I come back to it a third time and I think of leaving, and this is just me, but other people will be different. At that point, I'm like, it's done. My decision is made. Um because there's something, it's my gut, that's my intuition is telling me if I keep coming back to it. So if you're saying, you know, this agency has been doing nothing for you, mate, um, and you're getting it all yourself, depending on how long you've been with them, you don't want to, you know, just jump out too early if it's only been a couple of months. But if you've been there a year, two years, something like that, I've seen so many people and some people, honest to God, like say, stay six, seven years over, you know, what, <laughs> what they probably should have stayed. Um, you're getting older all the time, man. Life is passing by. Um, and it's in your control, this. No one is like under any kind of spell from agents or casting directors or anyone in this industry. You're completely 100% in control of your life. Um, move. If you have to move, mate, move. And you know what? If you're in Scotland and you're like, there's no work here or there's not enough work here, um, you're in complete control of that. Move. If you have to move to Manchester, if you have to move to London, do it because you don't want to get to 92 years old and think, fuck, what if I'd have done that? You know, you don't want to die with that regret. If this is indeed really, you know, it means the world to you and this is what you want to do. If the industry, you know, if I wanted to be a surfer and it was my burning desire, there's no point in me staying in Manchester. I can want to be a pro surfer as much as I want, but unfortunately, we ain't got no sea. I have to go to where the water is, and it's the same in acting. You're going to have to go to where the jobs are um, if you want to get work, you know, particularly of a, of a decent volume. Um, definitely. All right, Gemma, don't worry. Don't worry. But uh, says he's a bit late. It's cool. Bernard's in the house as well. Um, hope you are good. Um, I want to play you this video. So I play you quite a lot of Gary V's stuff. I like Gary a lot. Um, he's been a bit of a mentor of mine over the years. Helped me make some great decisions in and out of my career and my business and just my life in general. Um, but I'm going to play you this video again. This just goes back to about spending money on dumb shit that you do not need. This video says it all, I think. Um, and we'll come back and, and talk about it. It's only two minutes long, but just have a look at this. I think, um, I think it's going to hit home. The question is, what are the three activities, uh, three um, main goals that you have to set in order to move a step closer towards doing something that you actually love? So it's a really interesting question. And as I was listening, and I hope people are paying attention, <laughs> most people spend money on dumb things, which then forces them to do things they don't want. So step number one for most people in here, they should sell their home, take the money, and go rent. They should return their BMW and get a Toyota. I own a BMW, god damn it. And that's why, and honestly, that becomes the vulnerability. Why do you own a BMW? Because I love the car, just the brand, and I, lo- I-, I love driving it, so I don't know. So to me, that's where it gets interesting, right? Do you, or do you like what the brand does to make you look to other people? I don't know, I'm not assuming. I know, I don't you have know. a point, you have a point. I know I have a point, I don't know you, 
but I know in the macro that 98% of people that buy a Mercedes or BMW likes what it makes other people think of them, not that they like it. And that $487 a month versus what they really need, which is $100 a month, is why they have a job they hate because they're paying for a life that means nothing. (laughs) Guys, the amount of people in here that have a job they hate and they buy things they don't care about to impress people they don't give a fuck about scares the shit out of me. Oh, I was getting carried away. I was watching that myself. There, <laughs> uh, this is a little bit of a uh, little bit of a delay. Um, it just makes so much sense, doesn't it? It just makes so much sense. And I see people doing this. They have to buy. But you know what was funny? When I didn't have any money, right, and I couldn't afford it, I would buy those fifty quid T-shirts to impress people who I probably didn't know or didn't even like. Um, now I could afford them. I, I mean, all I ever wear is black t-shirts, you know me. Literally synonymous with a black t-shirt. You all probably think I've got one. I've got about a dozen of these. They're six quid each. The two for 12 quid from River Island. It's all I wear. Um, super plain, super cheap, basic t-shirts. Um, when we don't feel good about ourselves or we're not feeling that we're having the success that we, you know, we deserve or we should have, we compensate in such crazy ways. By going, well, you know what, I, I to feel good enough, I'm going to go out and I'm going to buy some expensive dumb shit or I have to have a car. I have to have this box on wheels with a particular badge on the front of it because because I feel so shit about what I'm achieving in, elsewhere in my life. This, this, this badge will do the work for me and other people will you know perceive that I'm successful. Such a false economy um, because you're just walking around miserable and then in debt to the point there where you then have to do that job you hate to pay for this shit you don't even need. So you get trapped. So you don't end up owning that car. That car ends up owning you. And it owns your life and it owns your acting career and it owns everything that you actually want to do because until you pay that off, you know, you're you're stuck working in this job that you hate. It's just, um, and I know that because, you know, I've experienced it like a long time ago, thank God. Um, Ollie says, damn right, in all capital letters. Joe says, Joe Barker, how are you? Joe says, hi, I've altered my own business so that I can 110% dedicate my time and efforts to my acting career, and it's working. Amazing. Joe, let us know what you do. What business, what business is it, and how have, you, uh, how have you done that? Ollie says, it's all a trap. It is, isn't it, mate? It is absolutely. All of this is, just, like I say, it's just absolutely a, uh, a false economy. You know, all of it when you're spending money that you do not have on stuff that you do not need to impress people that you do not like. That's what everybody seems to be doing in life who is not happy with where they are at. Um, and it's nonsense. So let me know. Uh, let me know your thoughts. But yeah, have an audit. That's all I mean. The message for this week: have an audit on everything that you are spending, and just make a note in your notes when you're out. You know, this is what I did, and this is what Steve did. Um, just on a daily basis, every time you literally spend money, and these days it's very easy because we have contactless. It doesn't even feel. Who does this? Because I've experienced this. Oh, I'll put that on contactless. I'll put that on contactless. feels like you're spending no money. Then you look at your statement three weeks down the line. You're like, shit, it's 400 quid. And what have I got for that? Well, nothing really because that was all just when I was out and about, just little things here and there, that, again, that I didn't need. Um, I've done that. You know, I'm not immune to this. I'm more aware of it, but I definitely still experience stuff like this. You know, particularly when I bought this apartment, I literally had to start again from scratch. I went from having a load of money in the bank to to nothing. I mean, like nothing. And for the first few weeks, I was shitting my pants. I was like, please let some big voiceover jobs come in. <laughs> I literally sent emails to my agent going, right, guys, I'm not, I know it sounds melodramatic, but like, I really have no money again now. Um, I've got this flat, but now also have a mortgage. It's not huge, but like I really need you to get me jobs. I had to literally beg my voiceover agent for jobs for the first few weeks, but I became very frugal. Um, and it was a really good learning experience for me because I suddenly started taking note of prices when I went out and going, you know what, I won't eat out because if I eat out now and I have that panini and a coffee and I shout my mate a coffee in as well, that's going to be 14 quid. You know, what I could get when I actually go to Sainsbury's or Aldi or any of these, you know, supermarkets with 14 quid is a lot more than a panini and two coffees. Um, You know, particularly if you're struggling to buy things in your acting career. Steve's joined us. Steve, I'm talking about you, mate. Um, When you said, so Steve, um, tell people, I'm sure it's five and a half grand, wasn't it? 
that you said that you were wasting in a year that you're now going to be able to put into your acting career because you're aware of it. I just think it's phenomenal. I want to create a little video with you on it and to put out on social media. Um, we should do that this week. Ruth Curtis in the house as well. How are you, Ruth? Hope you uh, hope you are good. Um, but yeah, you've just got to really like prioritize and go, what do I want? Do I want success in my life? And my career, right, well, I'm going to invest this money, not in a sandwich, not in coffees when I'm out, not in a badge on the front of a car, not in a three-bedroom house that I don't need, you know, you know, just to impress my friends, five-bedroom house, mansion, whatever. Um, you know, a lot of people do that, don't they? They, get the, they, they have to upgrade. They buy a house. But like me now, I've got a two-bedroom apartment, more than enough for me. But me going, oh, you know what? Right, I need to show off a bit more now. I probably should, you know, maybe I should have got a three better. Right, okay, I'll upgrade. What for who? I don't need any more than this. Just upgrading, you know, for the perception of other people. And I don't need that validity because I've, you know, I can give myself validation um, that I'm all right without a bigger, a bigger apartment or a bigger house. But people do it again and then they're locked in. Then they can't afford it. They have to work the shit job they don't like. They can't put any time in their acting career. They can't audition. They don't get jobs. They end up miserable. I've been there. Andrew said, I totally agree. When I was in my 20s, I had a four-bed house and a sports car and was massively depressed, stuck in it. Oh, this is like you just set this comment up for me, Andrea. Um, yeah, so you had a four-bed house, a sports car, and was massively depressed, stuck in a job I hated to pay for it. When I left everything and was sleeping on a mattress in a rented house before, um, before I, what, well, before a bed, I felt so free and the happiest I have ever felt. It's amazing, isn't it? Sophia's here. How are you doing, Sophia? Hope you're, uh, hope you're good. And Steve says, yeah, five and a half grand did include my 50th birthday and Christmas, but I almost <laughs> fell over. <laughs> five and a half grand. I mean, I'll let you spend some money on your 50th birthday, Steve. You know, that only happens once in a lifetime. And you can have Christmas, mate. Christmas is my favorite time of year. But I would say then maybe let's put a grand away for your 50th birthday or 1,500 quid for your 50th birthday. And then, you know, uh, Christmas, put another grand away. Still three grand a year you're throwing away three grand you could pay for your spotlight you could pay for oh my god like right so you could get three top quality showreel scenes shot at 300 quid a piece that's that's 900 quid spotlight's 150 150 a year at on this tv is 90 um so that's what 1240 headshot session 200 say oh tony blake's too cheap but yeah he does like 150 um for mate God, I mean, that still only costs you 1,400 quid. Equity subs, another 100 quid a year, depending on what you're earning. Um, and then the amount of acting classes you can then go to. Mate, with that extra money, you could go to New York and do a week intensive at like the New York Film Academy or something like that. <laughs> um, it's crazy what people are throwing money away on when they just don't, you know. Ultimately, again, it's when, when they're not, they're either just careless or they're running away from the life. For me, I was kind of running away from a situation because... I just wanted that instant gratification. Oh, I'll buy that. That'll make me feel good. That'll make me feel good. I'll go on this night out. It'll make me feel good. Um, you know, as opposed to going, well, wait a minute, is my future self going to thank me for this? Or is it going to actually like be like, what have you done, dickhead? You've now got no money to actually invest in yourself and become a better person, um, ultimately to have a better acting career. Helps me to think of my business, says Ollie. Um, as a vehicle, it's designed to get me to my vision. The more efficient, the faster we travel, lose the baggage and invest in the functionality of the vehicle. I love it. Absolutely love it. Look at all these these wise knowledge bombs people are dropping tonight. Yasmin, how are you doing? Hope you uh, hope you're good. Where's the answer on this meet up in London? I can try uh, I can try and find it. So Jenna, every Saturday, uh, first Saturday of the month, every first Saturday of the month, so just one time a month. And um, the next one's the sixth of July. Uh, we have uh, acts on this meet up in Manchester and London. In London, it's at something called Benugo Bar um, on uh, BFI British Film Institute South Bank. Um, in Benugo Bar there. In Manchester, it's at Home Theatre. I host the Manchester one and uh, a couple of the uh, members, Wendy and Mel, host the London one. But they're brilliant events. They're so cool. Um, we just have a great turnout. Look, I'll show you on, um, for those who didn't make it this time, if I get my web browser up. On that's on this now, we've got a little, uh, we've got a private community in here, away from Facebook, super private. This is where the real, this is where the real deal stuff goes on. Danny Shepard. Danny Shepard's in here. Hi, all. Just wanted to say hello. Danny, thanks so much for becoming a premium member of Rats on this, mate. I didn't realise. There's Brendan posting his reel before. Um, we should have a picture. Here we are. There we all are. There's there, there's uh, the Manchester meetup uh, that we had on Saturday. Um, I had loads of people um, turning up for that one. And we just get together. 
Um, we have a great chat. Ultimately, we go around the room. We ask people where they're at in their acting career, where they want to be. Um, and then we all chip in. I mean, it's such a supportive group. We all share information. We'll share email addresses for casting directors. We'll share what's being cast into in the TV world right now. Um, you know, people will work with each other on showreel scenes. People will write stuff together. Um, ultimately, it's just a real feel-good kind of place where everybody just chips in and helps each other out. Um, and it's free, basically. Um, you just have to buy yourself a coffee and some cake. Um, but yeah, that's us in Manchester, and there is one in uh, in London every month as well. That's another reason why you want to join the community. That's on this .tv. Get yourself a freaking membership and just stop wasting money on uh, on dumb shit. So yeah, it's a uh, Benugo Bar, South Bank, Jenna. Hopefully, you can uh, you can make it to the uh, to the next one. Um, so that's uh, that's like the, the bulk of tonight's broadcast. A couple of other things I want to talk about, though. Again, for premium members of Acts on This.tv, God, I've got some incredible features for you coming up on the site. So for those who are new to the site, I podcast on the site. I basically interview famous actors, casting directors, writers, producers, um, just people from all areas of the acting industry. We sit down, we break down what it requires to have success in this industry, chat for 60 to 90 minutes. I upload that to the site. You guys listen to it, and then you act on it. That's the whole point of it, act on the information in it. Guarantee you, if you do, you cannot fail to have more success in the acting industry. Um, you know, Alison just posted in the Facebook group. She got a job on a Netflix drama this year, this week, sorry, that would have paid for 30 years membership of Acts on This. Um, Lee just got an audition for five episodes today um, of a serial drama. That I don't think I can mention yet. Uh, we had Sai. He's got his audition next Monday uh, for this serial drama, all based off information that in the last week they have gained from Acts on This and they have then implemented into their life. Um, I've got so I've got a wicked, wicked podcast to launch in about two weeks' time. I think it is anyway. I don't know the air date. There's a brand new BBC drama coming out called Dark Money. Um, it stars Jill Halfpenny, Babu Cisse, a whole cast of amazing actors. Um, it's brilliant. I am. Um, it's, it's directed by Lewis Arnold, who's a fantastic director. He directs Humans, Broadchurch, Cleaning Up with Sheridan Smith, and it was cast by Victor Jenkins, one of the biggest casting directors in this country, and also just one of the like best guys in casting. I sat down and did the first that's on this TV premium podcast. It's a round table interview with all three of those people, so you get information on how this show was written, how it was cast, how it was shot, what it was like to star in it, what it was like to audition for it, how they auditioned for it, what you would need to do if you want to audition for shows like this. Um, and we recorded just an invaluable 90-minute uh, podcast. It's going to be available to all premium members of Acts on This.TV. Here's the trailer. Um, the show Dark Money comes out in a couple of weeks, I think. It's sometime in June, and it's going to air over four nights. The minute the show finishes, the fourth episode finishes, this is going to go out. But here's a little teaser for you. It's just so good. And sometimes you know you've done a good audition. You know you can see the look on the director's face that you've done a good audition, and you also know you haven't got the part. <laughs> Welcome everybody to a very special episode of Watch Ross, the Dark Money Roundtable. By the time this hits YouTube, hopefully you guys will have just spent the last four nights fully engrossed in a brand new BBC drama called Dark Money. Hey. Jill Halfpenny Hello. in the house, how are you? Oh, good awesome to see, see you. <laughs> Victor Jenkins, cast an extraordinaire, in the house. Lewis Arnold, director. It's a legend in the house and um, are you just going off look how excited they are the way victor usually works is he brings a small group of people that he thinks are perfect for it and then those people know it's only a small group of people you're seeing right and then you you meet those people in the room and you you, you know if you have to see more you see more but you know you try to be much more targeted yeah. what was your gut telling you when you left i didn't think i had it really and i'll tell you why Boom. So that was Jill talking about her auditions. This is Jill Halfpenny, you know, mega famous actress, worked in just incredible shows on TV, massive in the West End as well. Um, she was talking about the audition for Dark Money and how she left that audition thinking she had not got the part because of something that Lewis had said to her as she was leaving. Um, I'm not going to tell you now because I want you to listen to it in the podcast, but it's fascinating. And I know as actors, if you've been in an audition for a TV thing, you've probably done what Jill did as well. And you probably presume the same thing that Jill presumed. But it just shows you even actors of that caliber still leave the room with all the insecurities that all you lot and myself leave the room with, you know, no matter what part, you know, what uh, level of the industry you're working at. Uh, but that's going to be available to all premium members of Acts on This um, the minute uh, Dark Money on BBC One finishes. Um, the trailers for it, I think, start next week or maybe later this week uh, but keep an eye out for that um, 
it'll just be fantastic. Well, I know it is. I've seen the show and I recorded the podcast, <laughs> so it is just really, uh, really good. Gemma says she can't, uh, she can't wait. Uh, thank you, Linda, as well. Linda's saying thanks. Um, enjoying years and years. Yeah, so I am years and years uh, on BBC One. I think episode four is out tomorrow. I'm in episode five and episode six. Play a character called Billy Fritz. Keep an eye out for that uh, from next week. Uh, it's great. It's such a good drama, isn't it? I don't know if you've been watching it. Uh, Russell T. Davis drama. Emma Thompson stars in it with everybody from, oh God, everybody. Uh, Rory Kinnear, Ruth Madeley, uh, Russell Tovey, Jessica Hines, me. I don't star in it. <laughs> it's got two episodes of it, though. Um, it's so such a good drama. And it's quite scary, isn't it? Because it's set over a 15-year period, a little bit in the future. It... Um, it's really realistic in terms of where I think technology is going as well. And like, there's some things that since Russell wrote that and it was filmed have actually happened on a political landscape as well. Um, it kind of takes into uh, account Brexit and refugee crises and all these kind of things that are really you know topical right now and ha- actually happening. Uh, but that's on tomorrow night, Tuesday night, 9 p.m. Ricky says, ooh, you tease. Ricky, it's a good podcast, mate. You're just you're definitely going to want to listen to that. It's the best pod- I'd go as far as saying it's it's the best podcast I've ever recorded in terms of it being so rounded because you're getting an input. It's really interesting hearing such a famous actress talk to such a successful director and casting director about what she thought and has never told them until that moment on the podcast of the audition. You don't get that. You never ever get to hear that. You don't get to hear them all autopsying the audition about what he, you know, what what Lewis was thinking as Jill left the room, what Jill was thinking as she left the room, what Victor was thinking as Jill left the room, what Victor and Lewis spoke about after Jill had left the room. You never get to hear that information, and they would never normally talk to each other about it. So it's fascinating hearing Jill go, "Oh my God, when you said that, I thought you meant that," and him going, "No, no, of course I didn't mean that." Um, it's just really interesting as actors how we can overthink everything we want to overanalyze everything read into everything every other word that someone says oh did they mean this did they mean that uh, ricky said he's just gone premium ricky legend mate appreciate you man it's two pound fifty a week guys it's less than a cost of coffee um if you haven't got again if you worry about money and you haven't got two pound fifty a week to invest in your career and yourself i'm not being harsh and brutal this is just tough love you've really got to have a look at what you're doing and how how much you actually want your career the information on that website you don't get anywhere else no one else in the industry is doing this um there is no other straightforward bullshit free advice out there where literally someone's sitting someone down and going right explain to me exactly what i have to do to get in the room with you um what do i have to do to get an agent what do i have to do to get these auditions you know um no one's doing it like i've been doing it for eight years and the information on there has transformed my life i've had 24 tv jobs on really decent stuff, not because I have access to any other information that you guys don't, just because I'm acting on exactly, you know, I just practice what I preach, everything that I'm putting on the website and everything these people are saying to me, I'm doing, and it's working, and I'm working because of it. That's it. If you, you know, if you want that information, it's there for you. I can show you it. I can tell you where it is. Can't make you go and do it though. Um, But it is only 10 quid a month. There's nothing else on the market that gives you access to that information or anything even close. Um, so, so yeah, get involved. Um, here, here, Ross, your broadcast is terrific. Thank you, Linda. Appreciate you showing up. Um, I'll be going premium in the next few days, just waiting for payday. Brian, do it, mate. Do it. Honestly, if you PM me, if, if, if someone wants to direct message me as well, if, if you're on air, um, I'll even give you a... Um, a link um i shouldn't really be doing it because I, I was supposed to finish it really today or tomorrow um but i'll send you a link for a one pound trial if you want you can access everything on the site for seven days for a quid um i've been offering that like last week to quite a lot of people um honestly just like drop me a drop me a private message or if anyone's listening to this on the oh i've said it now haven't i there's people listening to this on the replay um all right i'll hold it open for a little bit but if you listen to this on the replay um, you have to drop me an email. Just send me an email, ross at actonthis.tv, and I'll send a link out for that one pound trial. Um, and that's just for people who have never been a member before. If you've been a member before and you've cancelled for whatever reason, um, I'm not going to give you a one pound trial because you know what it's like. It's freaking well worth the money. But for those who have never been a member um, and you like maybe a bit skeptical or whatever, maybe this is the first time you ever clapped eyes on me, go and IMDB me as well. Like never give anyone your money in this acting industry without doing your research on them, including myself. I would never, ever expect someone to just give me the money um, 
or invest in something with you know don't do it there's so many freaking just sharks around here or just take your money and give you nothing um look people up go have a look at my imdb profile ross grant go and see what shows i'm working on how long i've been in the industry for look at my training look at you know what i've been doing um before you get involved with stuff I and mean, i can promise you i'm super legit and i'm sure all the people in here and the you know the hundreds of members in the industry in the uh community already will vouch for you that i'm legit but um do your research honestly gary says well worth premium i need to catch up on the new podcast especially the accountant guy yeah so do a lot of practical podcasts as well it's not just about getting super successful actors and stuff in um i'll bring like accountants in you know i've got a great actors accountant just he's one of the you know the best accountants for actors in the country if you're going to be an actor and you're going to be successful um and you're going to earn money out your acting career um you've got to pay tax this really screws people up because they don't understand what it's like to be self-employed. They don't know how to pay their tax. This guy explains every single step of the way in a two-hour podcast and then does an unbelievable deal if people want to you know, use him for accountancy. But he represents some of the biggest actors and directors and producers in the industry. He's based in Media City. Um, so he's super relevant to the TV industry. He's not just some accountant I picked up off the side of the, you know, like the local town you know he just you know he's an account of a plumbers this guy specializes in tv specializes in actors um so we get that kind of stuff on super super valuable uh, we get writers on directors producers actors casting directors um just people from everywhere who are super super well known or successful or people have done things in a different way they found their own path into the industry that's not necessarily the same way as everyone else lydia west who i had on a couple of weeks ago she stars in years and years she plays bethany if you're watching years and years on bbc one at the moment um and we talk about her entry into the industry how she landed one of the biggest agents in the country by doing putting on her own devised play a devised fringe piece of theatre that most actors would be like I'm not doing that it takes loads of effort you know no one comes to watch fringe and you know all this sort of stuff you know um she landed the biggest one of the biggest agents in the country independent talent based off a devised theatre piece you know she just went right I'm not going to prescribe to doing it the same way as everyone else does it um, didn't go to a, a traditional drama school it's what a lot of actors get hung up on I'm not a real actor I'm not a bit of drama school bullshit um, just put the work in put the work in stop complaining stop spending money on dumb shit invest it in yourself um, and realise that you are in control of your life and your career um, let's have a look Ollie says do it it's so worth it just try it for a quid you won't regret it and you'll stay forever <laughs> cheers Ollie Ollie's staying forever definitely um, so Brian my email is Ross at actonthis.tv because if you're waiting for payday i'm sure you've got a quid in your account mate um you can get a seven day trial for a quid and then after seven days it'll just go on to a standard uh you know standard membership a monthly membership for you you can cancel it if you want but you won't want to cancel it when you see the stuff on there uh, ricky says as a theme for the evening is money get savvy people sign up to di- yeah sign up to discount sites look for deals make your money stretch as far as you can buy a rail card get discounted or free theater tickets go to master classes for cheap or for free do you know ricky one of the one one site that like i want to say changed my life but definitely changed my spending habits and has paid me back so much money is top cashback does anybody has anyone heard this we'll finish on this we've got five minutes left anyone heard of topcashback.com if you buy anything online you need to register for top cashback you basically get anywhere between two and a half percent and sometimes sometimes like loads loads of percent um back by just buying through top cashbacks links so i'm going to show you it let me go let me go let me let me go to this site those on the audio experience i will try and um just i will audio describe <laughs> what everyone else has seen on their screen uh so if you go to top cash back dot co dot uk because yeah dot com is going to be the american one uk's highest paying top cash back site you just basically click this join now for those on the audio experience there's a big pink join now button you click on it and then all you do um is when you log in i'll log in and i'll show you Oh, I don't have any bloody passwords and stuff. Let me see. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Hang on. Hang on a second. What's it doing now? I don't want to. I don't want to yeah, give me a password. I want it to sign me in. Autofill. Is it gonna? Maybe this will work. Let me see. Uh, is that the right password? Nope. Uh, what about this one? 
Tip of the day, don't set the password the same on every site, but remember the passwords when you set them because if you're like me and use a different password for every site, you never remember. Right, I'm in. So if I go to my account, so basically all I do, every time I want, I want to buy something, say what's to buy something from, I don't know, like give me a shop, something you would buy. I don't know, what, the, what have I bought recently I got cash back on? Do you know what? I wanted broadband. When I bought this flat, I wanted broadband. So I went, well, I'm going to buy my broadband from BT. So, I, so I, I Google BT, and it comes up here, BT Broadband New Customers. So you click on that. Now, I was just going to go and buy my broadband from BT like you normally would and just pay what you normally would, and that was it. Look at this. New customer offer, 165 quid cash back. And that's what I did. I basically signed up and went, right, I'm going to buy, um, you know, I'm going to buy my broadband. It's all the different packages here that you can get. It's no more expensive than just off BT's website but you buy through a top cashback link. Now, what, what happens is, to show you how the money actually works, is you pay BT, you know, the money you would pay, and then BT cut top cashback in on that money. They give them like a referral fee. Um, it's called an affiliate scheme, basically. So top cashback is an affiliate of BT. So BT pay top cashback to get them customers. So that's how it works. Um, but, you know, top cashback will give you will cut you in on the money they're getting from BT. So you get up to 165 quid just for signing up through Top Cashback. You're not paying any more. You're not paying Top Cashback. You're still going through BT. All you would do is click on Get Cashback, and it just takes you through to the page on BT's website where you sign up. But you're just cooked so that it knows you've gone through Top Cashback. That's it. Um, dead, dead simple. But I've done this. Have a look at my account here. Uh, hang on. That's a YouTube video. Where is Top Cash Back? I don't know where you are. That's the YouTube video of Gary V um, telling everybody not to spend money on dumb shit. Let's go back to Top Cash Back again. If we have a look in my account here, look, 203 quid I've had this year in cash back. And I've not paid anything, you know, extra. I got, I got BT Broadband. I've been to John Lewis, My Protein, I got cash back from. Um, other other places, you know, there's just like, and they just pay it into your account, pay it into your bank. Um, so if you want to save money, that's a great um, shout that, Ricky. Um, just get on top cashback and whenever you're buying anything online, just check that website to see if they have a disc, uh, you know, a, a link that you can buy it through um, and you'll get that cashback. There's things that banks do as well. I know NatWest have a scheme where if you pay for your uh, utility bills through your NatWest account, they will give you 2.5% cash back, you know, and that might only be like six quid a month or something on various bills, but that soon adds up. Um, you could easily pay for ads on this membership and your spotlight, you know, every year by just using top cash back when, you, when, you, when you're buying stuff. So get yourself signed up. Um, you'll, uh, you'll get money. And I think if people sign up through other people's links, I think I get like a referral link anyway from top cash back. Where if you sign up from my link, I get a tenner and you get a tenner as well. So maybe I should just send. I'll just send out my links to everyone. Go <laughs> sign up, sign up through mine. Well, I a fortune. Um, but do that, you know. And then when you've got a link, give it to your mates. Get your mates to sign up. And then when they earn their first lot of cash back, you get cut in on that. Um, it's uh, it's great. Gemma says she's got an account, hasn't used it in ages. Do it. Sometimes you forget, don't you? Sometimes you forget. I was like that. I'm like shit, I just didn't didn't go through top cash back. Um, but it is really, uh, really valuable. Um, so that's been useful for you tonight. Just really highlighting ultimately um, where you might be wasting money and then complaining that you've got none. But actually, if you're really brutally honest with yourself and you just get real with yourself for a minute, you're like, actually, you know what? You're just talking bullshit. You have got money to spend on that acting class or that membership or spotlight or equity you know, or acts on this or actors guild or actors center or whatever classes or anything you go into, you have got the money. Um, you just don't want to spend it because you're prioritizing dumb shit that gonna is you know, to show off to people you don't know or, you know, even people you do know, but you know, you're just like, I'm not, you know, I can't just go out in a plain t shirt. I've got to have a Versace motif on it or some bullshit like that. You don't need it. When you're when you're a successful actor, you can buy as many of them as you want until you are. Just save some money. Just save some money. Um, so it's been useful. Um, Steve says, yeah, uh, bulb energy, do the same kind of thing. I've made 150 quid out of that. Yeah, change Yeah, change your energy supplier, but go through top cash back. Steve got 150 quid. Um, 
Look at that. That's value for you, isn't it? Look at the value you've got on this broadcast tonight. And it didn't cost you anything. <laughs> you might go and save 150 quid now uh, on your energy bills. Um, so it's been useful. Um, hugely appreciate you joining me as always. We're going to be back next Monday night, um, 9 p.m. I never have any clue what I'm going to talk about until the week because it's all based on what's happening in my life or something that I've seen that's inspired me. Um, so I don't know what we're talking about. But if you want to talk about something in particular, please drop me a message on social media. You can get me on Twitter at Ross A. Grant or at Act On This TV. You can join the Facebook group, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Act On This TV. And please come and get involved with the actual main community on the main website, actsonthis.tv. Like I say, 59 people over the weekend jumped on that. Um, and many are, you know, already having more success than they were having, you know, literally a few days ago. There's people who have got auditions over the last couple of days. Well, people got auditions today based on conversations they had in the community on Saturday. Um, for decent TV shows, you know, serial drama, I'll give you a little clue. It might right now be the nation's favorite soap um, based on the soap awards at what happened um, so yeah, you know, this is stuff that people are, it's happening for people because they are spending money on what they should be spending it on, not dumb shit. So do do an audit, stop hemorrhaging money and spending it on nonsense. I will definitely make sure I'm not, I'm not buying too many £3.70 coffees. Um, I will limit those <laughs> to just a couple a week. Um, and I will stick with my uh, 35p Nespresso capsules, which are uh, a still a bargain. Uh, I love it. Um, thank you, Gemma. Cheers, Ricky. Says, enjoyed the chat. Dawn says, I love Monday nights. Thanks, Ross. Have a great week, everyone. Yeah, everyone have a, a fantastic week. And um, and keep in touch, you know. Like I say, in, in the main community on the website, we've got we've got that private community in there. Utilize it. You know, if you've got questions you want to ask about agents and stuff you wouldn't want to put out publicly normally, um, it's super private and super secure. And there are hundreds of actors in there who are more than happy to uh, help you out and just, you know, it's one up all up. It's, I'm really proud of the ethos of the community. Everybody's so giving. Um, you know, and just uh, just kind to each other. Um, what I'm going to try and do now is uh, after Facebook have changed. I told you, didn't I, on last Monday's broadcast, Facebook have changed the way these broadcasts, the way you actually go live on Facebook now. So I really struggled to end the broadcast last week. I had no clue how to do it. So you might have to just put up with me for just a couple of minutes. I can't see your comments, unfortunately, now. Um, but hopefully... If I click in here, they might have sorted it out so I get a button to actually end the broadcast because I didn't last week. I was like, how on earth do I uh, How on earth do I do this? Come on, Facebook. Oh, well, that didn't work. That just, that just went completely blank. So I'm still broadcasting, um, I'm sure. <laughs> I just can't see anyone. And they, oh, for, aha, ha, ha, ha. Right, should be able to do it now. Um, awesome. I'll play you this trailer for this Dark Money um, podcast again that's coming out. Uh, like I say, I don't know exactly when this is going to be because I don't know when Dark Money airs. I don't think it's got a, a, an official air date yet, but it is going to be this month. Um, this in itself is a reason to uh, become part of the community. But I'm going to be doing more of these roundtables where I'll bring on like three casting directors, three writers, three agents. Oh, I've also got Archie Purnell, um, fantastic agent uh, from PHA, uh, one of a big agency in Manchester, doing a podcast with me next week as well. Um, so if you've got any questions for Archie on getting an agent, that guy's just a hustler, He's so good, um, then let me know those and I will put those to Archie. I will get you the answers that you want. So that's a, uh, another great podcast that's coming up. Um, so this is, uh, yeah, the trailer for um, for the Dark Money podcast, which will be out this month. Um, it will appear in your members area, at on this.tv, one minute past the last episode airing. It's on over four consecutive nights. Um, thanks so much for being here. Until next time, bye for now. And sometimes you know you've done a good audition. You know you can see the look on the director's face that you've done a good audition and you also know you haven't got the part. Welcome everybody to a very special episode of Watch Ross, the Dark Money Round Table. By the time this hits YouTube, hopefully you guys will have just spent the last four nights fully engrossed in a brand new BBC drama called Dark Money. Hey. Jill Halfpenny Hello. in the house, how are you? Oh, good awesome to see, see you. <laughs> Victor Jenkins, cast and extraordinaire. In the house. Lewis Arnold, director. It's a legend. In the house. Um, are you just going off? Look how excited they are. The way Victor usually works is he brings a small group of people that he thinks are perfect for it. And then those people know it's only a small group of people you're seeing. Right. And then you you meet those people in the room and you, you, you know, if you have to see more, you see more, but you know, you try to be much more targeted. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah. Was your gut telling you when you left? I didn't think I had it. Really? And I'll tell you why. 